front of Michael Jordan, a monk that might need a valid science. Also, Chargers Chiefs with the stone, with Yates, Michael Smith, and Woody Page. Let's go. Michael Anthony Smith. What up? My man. Good to have you back. The second, technically. Yeah. Second. Double duty for you today, right? It's two into the horn. Yeah, man. Mm. NFL news of the moment, Carson Wentz fractured vertebrae. Will fully heal if given time to rest, Schefter reports. And Wentz seen yogging at practice today. How the Eagles play getting him back to full health. And how the Eagles play Wentz's renegotiation, which can happen once the season ends. That was once thought it could be $150 million range now, another health scare. Not to mention how the Eagles crashed this season. Smith, I'm putting you to work right away. Should the Eagles be in shutdown mode with Wentz? And if so, how murky does this negotiation get? Well, I'll answer the second part first. This should have nothing to do with the negotiation. He's proved to be worth the long term, mm -hmm. make a contract, okay. whatever that number is. The reasons why they didn't you know, do so well this year had not so much to do with Carson Wentz. It seemed to be more his supporting cast, the defense. We know about the struggles in the secondary, so on and so forth. But in terms of the short term, the most interesting thing about Shepard's report is continued evaluation. What's to continue evaluating? <laughs> what time is it? It's uh, about five minutes after 5 o'clock. Yeah. He, he should already be on injured reserve right now. You started the season conservatively with him, holding him out those first couple of games because you let the Super Bowl MVP uh, start the season. Let the Super Bowl MVP finish the season once again. That's why you kept Nick Foles in the first place as insurance. Woody Page, where are you with Wentz and how the Eagles should proceed? Well, Michael's been away for a while, but he came back strong. You're yeah. absolutely right, Michael. And as the only panelist here who's had undergone a CAT scan the last couple of days, they're usually <laughs> very accurate. <laughs> so, That's a lot of information you just put on us, Woody. All right, I hope you're feeling well, please. It's some inside information. <laughs> it usually is accurate, and I think in this case, Michael is absolutely right. They should put him on injury reserve, and they've had more than a small sampling. Here was a guy that was not only up for Rookie of the Year, he was up for MVP before he got got hurt. I, I think there's no doubt that you continue to negotiate as if he's a great young player okay. and he's going to be around for a long time. They found their quarterback. They don't need to worry about the future with Kevin him. Kevin Blackstone, you feel that way as well? Well, I'll just say this. Yeah, you got to put him on the IR right now. There's no reason to play him. Your season's pretty much done. You got the Rams coming up. The Cowboys are pulling away. It's over. Um, as far as going forward, you know, you hope to make the right decision. I don't know how much you want to think about investing uh, an entire boatload of money in a quarterback that can't stay up for 16 games. Now, you know, this is a very odd thing. You got to really roll the dice on this. You got to look at history. You got to really think it out. Um, this is the same thing that happened with somebody like Drew Brees, who people didn't think was going to be healthy enough to well, come that's back. That's one example of going the other way. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. The He's an absolute superstar. Time. So you really got to study this. You know, situation. you use the expression boatload. At this point, we're so far past boats. We're like multiple yachts. We're like the <laughs> GDP of Tonga. Uh, Clinton Yates, how about you? <laughs> did, did I miss the part where some person not named Carson Wentz actually won the Super Bowl for the Eagles? I'm not just going to assume that that's what okay, would have happened. Here we go. In Let's position. go around this And one. he can't actually finish a season. As it turns out, I am absolutely changing my negotiation terms for this guy on a simple man hour situation. If you can't stay on the field, you can't play for the team. And that is something that has to be taken into consideration no matter what he may or may not have done in somebody's minds leading up to that point. This is a major problem for the Eagles because you're not just going to be able to keep Foles necessarily. I'm very concerned for this team in their quarterback situation as they should have been all season. Clinton, just because you've been hurt, just because you've had some bad luck, does not make you injury prone. When he got hurt against the Rams, that was a freak accident where he tore his ACL. Lots of players tore their ACLs nature, but, yeah. and come back just fine. And he came back just fine. Now he's got a, ver you know why he's got a, 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 fr a fractured vertebrae? Because he's constantly getting hit. Because the offensive line needs to be better. Because the supporting cast needs to be better. They need to run the ball better than they do. I don't think this is something that you look at and say this is a flaw in Carson Wentz's yeah, you can overall get back in gamers' there. overall package. It's not about it being a flaw. It's about the fact that no matter what the reason is, he's not on the field. It doesn't matter what it is. The point is you're not going to give him a bunch of money for something he can't do. Whether it's, it's a legitimate question. Are you as high on Carson Wentz today as you were week 13 of last season, Woody Page? Yeah. Well, most teams don't have two quarterbacks. They have two quarterbacks, as Clinton was talking about. The Washington Football Club has none. I mean, I think that's not the problem. It's not the quarterbacks. It's the offensive line. It's the problems, injuries they had in the defensive backfield. They need to get a better running attack. I, if I were a 
a club owner in this league, I'd love to have that situation with Wentz and Foles. And so Florida. you sidestep the question, but it sounds like you say yes. You're as high on Carson <laughs> Wentz today as you were uh, this time last year. Blackstone, you want to answer that? No, I'm, I'm not for the same reason that Clinton said. It has nothing really? to do with Carson Wentz, the, the person. It just has to do with maybe just bad luck. Carson Wentz, the body, I, mean, I think sure, is what you're trying to say. The, yes. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And so I think you have to recalibrate what you're thinking about in investing in him despite the fact that he has un an unbelievable um, uh, talent skill. Um, so just because of that doesn't mean you give him all the money if he can't play 16 games for you. Okay. It's not personal, Tony. It's strictly business. Strictly about Carson Wentz's body, not his person, his body. I understand what you're saying. We'll move on. Thursday Night Football. <laughs> Chargers Chiefs. One game separates them in the standings. Tonight could be the difference between a bye and home field throughout the playoffs and road and at Pittsburgh in round one. Chargers might not have a running back. Where's Marion Butts? Melvin Gordon, game time decision with a sprained knee. Gordon said it'll be a mutual decision between he and team. Back up Austin Eckler, bruised nerve in his neck in the concussion protocol. Woody Page, this is your division. How much do the Chargers need Gordon, and should the Chargers risk claiming for this big game here? They shouldn't play. It's not that they miss Melvin Gordon. They miss a healthy Melvin Gordon. If he's got a sprained knee and, he, and there's curious, curiosity about whether he's at full strength again, don't play him because you're going to need him in the playoffs. You're going to be in the playoffs. You're probably going to be a wild card team. You're probably going to play on the road. You're as comfortable playing on the road as you are in a place where the last time the Chiefs played there, they had 80% of the crowd. So don't play Gordon because he's not going to be the same guy we saw earlier in the season. But they do have Joey Bosa, who didn't play in the earlier game, and he's made quite a difference since he's come back. But I think it's going to be a close game, but don't play Mike Gordon, Smith, please. You agree? I think you play it smart, and I, and I think Coach Lynn is going to do just that. I don't think he's going to put him out there if he's compromised. I think he's going to put him out there if he's better than the alternatives, and he probably is, but I, I agree with Woody that you, that you play it smart and think long-term when it comes to Melvin Gordon. But this game isn't about Melvin Gordon. I mean, it's about Phillip Rivers. We just talked about staying on the field. Nobody's done that over the last decade plus more better than Phillip Rivers. He's out there every single game. I, I go back to the time when he played in the AFC title game on a torn ACL in New England. Speaking of in New England, win or lose, this is a Chargers team, regardless of what happens tonight, I think we can believe in. You've never been able to say that in a long time. You can trust this Chargers team fully capable of going on the road, winning one, two, or even three games in the AFC playoffs. And that starts tonight, winning in a place that they haven't won the last nine times. Phillip Rivers You've has got, got to the come Chargers to tonight? tonight? Is that, is that what I'm hearing from Mike I do. Smith? I do. Yeah. I do. They, they, I don't think they turn it over the way they're accustomed to doing. I don't think they come up with creative ways of, of blowing the game the way they're accustomed to doing. I don't think they give Kansas City short fields. And okay, <laughs> there, there's still time limit to your answer here. Every, not every answer is your FaceTime, Michael Smith. Clinton Yates, how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing him simply because of the reasons what he stated. I mean, they could be a 13-win wildcard team, which is crazy to think about on a lot of levels, <laughs> but I don't make that risk. I mean, Joey Bosa is a very important player coming back to this game, but also on the other side of the ball, there's Eric Berry who's coming back for the Chiefs. So this is a game that's going to be determined by defense, in my opinion, not necessarily just what the two quarterbacks who have been lighting it up are going to do. You hear that? Because that would have sounded so bizarre about 10 weeks ago in the NFL, but the last two weeks, we saw what the Cowboys did to the Saints. We saw last week Baltimore gave KC a game. Game. Blackstone, where are you on this game? You're seeing offense, you're seeing defense, are you seeing Melvin Gordon? I'm not seeing Melvin Gordon because they have found that his understudy is pretty good, Justin Jackson out of Northwestern University, just by the way. Okay, that's uh, a and the other thing is they do have a top 10 defense. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a top 10 defense. The Chiefs have a top 32 defense. <laughs> and that's what makes all the difference for the Chargers this year. It's not only just about how well Phillip Rivers is playing, but it's also about the fact that they can count on the other side of the, the, the line of scrimmage to get them done. Mike Smith's got... Um, Los Angeles in this game. Woody Page, Chargers or Chiefs? I've got the Chiefs barely. Clint Yates? Barely. Late. Chiefs on a Thursday at home for KB. sure. I'm going to take the Chargers. That's been the one thing, uh, Clinton Yates, that home field advantage in the Thursday game. That's, that's the one thing. Of all things in the NFL, that usually rings true. We'll move on. Raptors 113, Warriors 93 at Oracle with no Kawhi Leonard. And I'd like to thank Woody Page here for volunteering to pick this game when that wasn't even the question on yesterday's show. You said Toronto had no shots with or without Kawhi. Enjoy this medicine. All right, Durant after the loss. I mean, they're not an up-and-coming team. They're here. Clinton, how big of a statement was this for the Raptors? 
It was a massive statement, and I think that Nick Nurse right now is the front runner for NBA Coach of the Year. He's got this team with the best record in the league, and let's think about what he's dealing with here. He came into that situation after they fired their coach. They just got Kawhi. The job he's done with maintaining that together and making sure that they can still be cohesive, I am extremely impressed. Listen, last night, they were never in doubt of winning that game, which is something you haven't seen a team do in Oakland in a long time. They were beating them from the outside, getting all sorts of easy layups and, and points in the paint. They played a tremendous, a tremendous game last night. I was extremely KB. impressed. And condolences to Nick Nurse, who lost his mother just the other day. Um, got that team together. They obviously played for him. And as I pointed out the other day, Kawhi Leonard has missed a number of games this year. And still, this team, this Raptors team, has found a way to win ball games. And why is that? Look at the stat line last night. Once again, Kyle Lowry playing out of his head. 23 points. 12 dimes, leading this league in assists and leading this league in leadership right now with that Raptors team. All right, Woody Page, you said they had no shots. Uh, I remind you again. Uh, but they won the game. What did you learn from it? Well, they do have a shot. They have a <laughs> shot at winning the NBA championship. They are 2-0 and against the Warriors. They've ended all those schemes that they had against the Warriors. They went in there without their best player, arguably, and won the game and dominated in the game. And the Warriors are known for three-pointers, scoring in the paint, and fast-break points. Guess what? The, uh, Toronto had 82 fast-break and in-the-paint points to 52 for the Warriors. They beat them at their own game on their home court mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. all their four top players there. Yes, I was embarrassed that I said it yesterday. I should have called in sick today. Okay, well, we're happy you're here. Um, and now, Michael <laughs> Smith, what did you learn from Toronto last night? I'm not sure how much of a declaration uh, that was last night, given that there's a question as to how engaged, even though the Warriors played all their top guys, how engaged, uh, how focused they were in that game. And, and you know, you typically see uh, two-time defending champions go through go through laws like that. But I'm not trying to qualify or take away anything that the Raptors did. Not only did they do it without Kawhi Leonard, but without Valanciunas for the second half. And the undercurrent throughout this entire season is obviously, and the reason why people, you know, kind of raised some eyebrows, Masai Ujiri not only fired Dwayne Casey, but also swung the, for the fences in traded for Kawhi Leonard, given that he could walk away after this year, is whether he would leave after this year. With every win like this, when they're winning yeah, without him yeah, and showing true. the supporting cast that he has in Toronto, it makes you wonder, why would you leave Toronto? I know he's from L.A., but why would you leave this situation? Well, Mike Smith, you said a two-time defending champ enough? might have a lull, a 580 and a half time champ on this show. A slight lull because of his pick last night, but Woody Page, I'm happy to hear you're feeling well after this CAT scan that you had. Uh, what is it? I have a double hernia, which must mean I'm better than twice as good as most How'd everybody else. How'd you get a double hernia? hernia. <laughs> uh, heavy lifting, carrying panelists every All day. All right, there's you. the joke. Uh, there we go. Uh, Buy yourself next. Bye. Welcome back to Around the Horn, coming to you from the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. Buy or sell time, but first a bonus. Woody Page, didn't know you were playing hurt today. Double bonus for double hernia. The interesting thing is it's a double hernia the yeah, hard way. Two on it. one side, none on the other. Hornets 108, Pistons 107, Jeremy Lamb the shot, Malik Monk the celebration on the court. They reviewed it to see and if Monk humble. encroached on the play and saw Monk and a few other Hornets on the court, saw there was time left, teed them up. It gave Detroit one free throw, and then Monk and Charlotte had to hold their breath as the final shot missed. Michael Jordan saw you do all of this, Malik Monk. Woody, how should he feel? Well, I'm buying it. Uh, he described today that he was giving him a love tap. Looked more like a smack on the back of uh, the head to me. But I like to see Michael involved with his team. We always wondering what he's doing with the Hornets. And he actually cared about what was going on last night as they went uh, into a situation where they're in the playoffs now. Michael Smith. If it ended today. And you got to buy this. This is part of the fun of playing for Michael Jordan, who it's Michael Jordan, Charlotte Hornets owner. Not Charlotte Hornets owner Michael Jordan. You get, you get what I'm saying? No matter how far removed he is from his playing days or no matter how long he owns the Hornets, he is always the GOAT first, owner second, and the GOAT can do what he wants. Things that no other owner can think of doing. Yeah, where has this Jordan been the entire time? I've been waiting for some personality out of this guy who was the exact embodiment of what the game was supposed to be for so long. Thank you, Michael, for finally doing something that makes me laugh. Yeah, big. Yeah, and what he was doing was pointing up, saying, look, the ceiling may be the roof, but you cannot <laughs> go on the floor until we that get made triple us laugh, zeros. Don't but do he that said again. that, yeah. Well done, KB. Yeah. All right, Pelicans 118, Thunder 114. Anthony Davis, 44 against 
while it might not look like it on these clips, the number one defense in the league. Michael, should we buy into Davis and the Pelicans this year? I know we, every year we had this conversation. Is this year different? No, yeah. No, it's not right now. I mean, they're a 500 team. I think he scored 45 times this year and they're 3-2 and two in those games. Now, they got a lot of injuries on this team right now, but they certainly need to make some kind of move to get him more help. Oh, this movie's going to end the same way they always do, which is to maybe get into the playoffs as an 8 seed and getting swept in the first round. buy or sell this year being different for Davis and the Pelicans? I'm selling it. I mean, if the playoffs started today, guess what? The Pelicans would not be in it, and so therefore, I'm not taking AD seriously as an MVP candidate. Simple as that. JB? Ooh. This is the third consecutive season in which he's averaged 28 points a game. So uh, nothing has really changed. He needs more people around him that can help them get over that 500. But go after Yates here. Not seriously as an MVP candidate, Yates said. Stone, you agree thank with you. that? Thank you for coming back to The that. team's not no, good no, enough no, for them to honestly in. take him seriously. That's just how it works in the NBA. I'm sorry. We all know I'm this. I'm sorry. We know about taking I things can take seriously when you're wearing a sweater like that. Um, how about you? Go ahead, <laughs> Woody Page. You better take them seriously, Clinton. I think this is a team that's going to be in the mix before the season's over. With Randall and Holiday and Davis playing like an MVP and Gentry doing a good job of coaching them, they have a big three that I think is going to get them in the playoffs and cause problems for a lot of teams. They're hard yeah, out. Give me your MVP race right now. But it's only got three guys on it? Is, is that it? If that's uh, it, that's, that's fine. If you're only saying it's I Giannis mean, I actually and think Kawhi the Lowry's and... of the world are in this. Yeah, I mean, I'm, my point is this. When a team is not that good, it's hard to justify putting a guy in the MVP race. It's not about Davis not oh, being a good okay. player. Lake, you know what? All right. All right. Come to your side of the street. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> if there's a conversation about the MVP, he's in it. It's it just doesn't need to be in the top three. Him. Okay, we'll move on. Buy or sell three. <laughs> F this team and this fan base. That's Washington defensive captain Mason Foster in an Instagram exchange with a quote unquote fan. Jay Gruden, his coach says, he doesn't really care. It was a private message. Should the coach care, Clinton? Should we care that a team, uh, players saying F this team, F this fan base? And he should absolutely care. This is a peak Ash Burnistan situation. Listen, what the players on this team don't understand is that the fans have been going through this nonsense with underachieving teams for years. So while you want to diss them and say it's more fun to play on the road than it is at home, they know the history of the squad. That's why they have a problem with you guys. The disconnect between the coaches, the players, the locker rooms, and the ownership is a disaster right now. Uh, absolutely correct. And if they go into their next game and he's still the captain, they got a real problem because that's not the way a captain acts on a team. And I don't know what Jay Gruden's talking about, not caring about it and then not being worried about it, being on being on social media. What, what world is he living in? I care about uh, the professor and the guy in a funny sweater not caring enough to get rid of Gruden, get rid of the ownership there. This it. has been a total disaster all season long. You guys should be speaking out rather than complaining about a player direct messaging to somebody. Mike Smith. I don't know that I've ever said this, but I see where Jay Gruden is coming from here because who's this sucker that decided to put a direct message out in public? It's not if if Mason Foster whoa, says whoa. this to the press, that's one thing. Whoa, whoa. If he what posts this there, publicly, Mike, that's this one was, thing. This was a hack job. It was an no, accident. What I'm it was meant. No, 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 no. What, what I'm what I'm saying is it was a direct message. It was not meant for public consumption. Had he not been publicly revealed, we would not know about this. So if you're Jay Gruden, all you want to know is, is Mason Foster's true feelings, are they manifesting themselves Ooh. in his day-to-day -day oh, This was not supposed to be for public consumption. I was meaning to direct message How you. How in the hell four did I? Wait, that wasn't that terrible. It was supposed an to be a direct it message. Was social what have media. I done? Oh, no, Mike Smith. Oh, no. It's still this happens. Happens. I feel, I'm away for... You know what? <laughs> For this show. Whoa. It goes down to the DMs, Mike. Yes. We all know that. Kevin Blackstone showdown next. Oh, it was so good to see Michael Smith back. Oh. Hey there, I'm Tony Reale. This is Showdown. It's going to be Clinton Yates and Kevin Blackstone. Quote, we're a fully operational Death Star. End quote. Yankees GM Brian Cashman. Clinton, is that a good thing? Do you want to be the Death no. Star? Absolutely not. What a Death Star can do is one, blow up planets, but it's also got, hello, a significant flaw in the design that can make, be exploited. Come on. <laughs> but not only that, the, the Death Star not, never got put into operational uh, function, right? They never used it to do what it can do. So that means you're just sitting on the fence. You're not being your whole self. I think the people in Aldenon will say that it, it, it did what it could do, but points, Clinton Yates. Showdown 2, Josh Hart high-five struggles. Silver screen and roll, 
broke down the film and found out he has a 28% hit rate on his high five. Is that good or is that bad, KB? That's good, because Josh Hart's from Washington, D.C., like all of us, Sidwell friends. We don't do high fives all down here. We do a fist bump or something like that. Or maybe, He's a problematic maybe person bump. when it we comes to that. the timing. He can't find eye contact with his teammates. He's got to learn how to get better practice, Josh. It's pretty simple. Did you say problematic? Did, did you say problematic in your answer? Did I? I think you did. <laughs> Kevin Black is on FaceTime. <laughs> I was stunned to find out today that DJ Durkin, who was coaching at the University of Maryland when Jordan McNair fell uh, to his, what was eventually his death at a Maryland practice, is back coaching again, this time in one of those consultant jobs at Alabama. This should not happen. If there's anything the NCAA should step in and stop, it is this, or at least the SEC, or maybe at least the president of Alabama. Too soon. Kevin Blackstone today's winner. Mike Smith, don't be a stranger. 23 and a half hour break. We'll see.